Continuing with our discussion on logarithmic functions, um, we're looking currently at the graph of uh, function 2 to the x and its inverse log base 2 of x. And what I want to do is, um, you know, we talked about the idea that the, the domains and the ranges switch place. What I want to do is actually look at a table of values with x and f of x, and then also look at that for x and f inverse of x. Okay, so just table of values to find some ordered pairs. I didn't plot these out with a lot of detail. So first of all, the y-intercept occurs when x is 0, and I'll reveal a couple of these points as I go. Uh, if I plug a 0 in, 2 to the 0 is 1, because anything to the 0 is 1. If I plug in a 1, 2 to the 1 is 2. If I plug in a 2, 2 squared is 4. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky when we throw negative powers in. If I do 2 to the minus 1, that's kind of going to the left over here. 2 to the minus 1, negative powers flip the base, so you get 1 half. And 2 to the minus 2, well the minus flips it and the 2 squares it, so that's a 1 fourth. Okay. So now, if I were to look at the ordered pairs for the inverse, I've just got to reverse or switch all the x's and y's. So the x and f inverse of x, oops, f inverse, draw that out right. Um, all of these orders, ordered pairs switch. So instead of 0, 1, we have 1, 0. Instead of 1, 2, we have 2, 1. Instead of 2, 4, we have 4, 2. Instead of negative 1, 1 half, we have 1 half, negative 1. And instead of negative 2, 1 fourth, we have 1 fourth, negative 2. And all these ordered pairs should land on the purple graph. Okay, so 1, comma 0 is your y intercept, or I'm sorry, your x intercept. Uh, 2, comma 1 should be on the graph. 4, if you come out 4, you go up 2. If you go back a half here, well, forward a half, I guess, from the origin, and down to negative 1, and if you go forward a quarter, you go down to negative 2. So it kind of makes sense uh, that these ordered pairs all switch places. Um, there's also going to be some properties of logarithms that we're going to look at uh, in the next couple videos that come from some of these points. Okay, so we'll maybe revisit this a little bit. Okay, um, then f the last thing I really wanted to look at with this is that when you have this base that is greater than 1, okay, so if the a value, a is greater than 1, remember that's your base, then you have exponential growth, right? Ex um, interestingly, it's similar for the logarithmic function. As long as your a value is greater than 1, you have what we call logarithmic growth. It's not as rapid. In fact, it's quite a bit less rapid of a growth, but it is still a growth. So we'll call it logarithmic. Let me slide this over. Growth. Okay. So whenever that base is greater than one, you will have logarithmic growth. Okay. So now let's look at another function. Uh, another combination of functions, really. And these are going to be um, slightly different. The first one I'm going to come up with here is going to be, uh, let's see, we'll call it g of x this time. And we're going to make it 1 half to the x. So a little bit different function. We're cutting everything in half. And the corresponding inverse then, using the definition, is going to be um, the log 
base one half of x. And so I just want to give you a quick overview of what happens when you have a base that is not greater than one but less than one. And so let's take a look at the graph of these two functions. All right. Uh, the one half x we know is an exponential decay. So it's going to be decreasing to the right because that base is less than 1. Therefore, the logarithm is going to be the reflection of that graph across the line y equals x. Okay, so we're going to take our y-intercept, make it an x-intercept, and then our horizontal asymptote on the positive x becomes a vertical asymptote on the positive y. Okay, so now I'm going to sketch my graph. And you should see that they intersect right on the line y equals x. And this logarithm is a decreasing function, so we have a logarithmic decay just like we have an exponential decay. All right, so just very briefly, when the a value is less than one, you have exponential decay. And when the a value for a logarithm is less than one, you would have logarithmic decay. Right. Okay, so again, the domains and ranges for these, I'll just do the domain in blue for the g of x. The domain there is going to be, again, all real numbers. And the range, uh, well, again, it's all positive numbers. It's everything above the x-axis, so 0 to infinity, not including the 0. When I jump over to the inverse, the logarithm, the domain here is everything to the right of the y of the y axis, but it never hits the y or goes left. So that's zero to infinity. And the range is going to be all real numbers because the arrows go up indefinitely and down indefinitely. And you can see again how those uh, domains and ranges interchange. All right. Um, so we've got a quick look at all of you know both of the uh, main types of logarithmic graphs, the growths and decays. And now I want to talk about a, a definition here for logarithmic functions. Um, and so just in general, I said by definition, they are the inverses of exponentials. And so if you have a logarithmic expression, log base a of x, it is equivalent to an exponential expression, x equals a to the y. And so what I want you to notice is that with inverses, you interchange the x and y. So here I've got y equals log base a of x. The x is along with the a base. When I go to the inverse, the exponential, the x and y switch places. And so the x was with the a, now the y is with the a. Okay. So if I start moving things around, or if I start plugging things into these, uh, notice then that you know an exponential expression like oh I don't know 49 equals 7 squared that's an exponential expression it, it's got an exponent in it and it fits the criteria it is then equivalent to a logarithmic equation where the exponent becomes this lonesome side over here and the logarithm keeps its base but then the x is the 49 okay 
And so what I want you to see is that the logarithm here is equal to whatever power takes this base to this other number on the inside. Now I better give these things a name uh, before I move on and then I'll jump to another video here. Um, when you see this y equals log base a of x, there are three things you want to, three different names here. First of all you have the base. This x value, the input, is what we're going to call the argument. Um, and finally the output is going to be called the uh, power. And I'm going to call it the power because it's the power on the exponential um, form. Okay, So the base, the argument, the power, and of course the answer to a logarithm is always the power that takes the base to the argument. All right, so we're going to talk more about that in the next video.